Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the I Work in Sport live interview. This is the show where we talk to accomplished sport business professionals who come here to share their knowledge, experience, tips and advice in order to help you succeed in your career. If we're just meeting, my name is João Frigerio. I'm the founder of I Work in Sport, and I want to thank you for being here with us today. So this is an interactive uh, uh, session, right? So let me know in the comments, uh, is this the first time that you're uh, here uh, with us? Or um, tell us also where you're watching from. That's always good to know. Uh, if you're watching the replay, also leave a comment. Uh, we'll check all of them. If you don't know I work in sport, we're a platform to help you accelerate your career in sport. If you want to work in sport or if you already uh, work in sport, we are here to help you either way. Um, we organize events which connect you with recruiters, for instance, in case you're looking for a job or with um, sports management academic uh, programs if you're interested in investing in education. So these programs can be a very effective way for you to enter the industry. And in fact, we have one coming up um, in, in a few days. So last week we did, our, uh, we did have our job fair in Lausanne after a few years doing only online. And now we're going to have uh, the um, Education Expo, as you can see here, on the 21st and the 22nd of June. Um, so you can meet uh, many uh, interesting programs there. So those in the pictures all will be there. Uh, Cruyff, the, uh, uh, the Montfort University, uh, FBA, the Real Madrid um, the Columbia University, a few others uh, will be there too. There's a link in the description. Um, if you want to register to that, it's free to attend. So yeah, do that if you're interested in, in meeting uh, their admissions team, uh, get more information about maybe uh, scholarships. In fact, we are also giving a $5,000 scholarship to one of the, the people that uh, um, will eventually be accepted by one of the programs. We did that before. Uh, and we're going to do that again. Now, let me introduce you to my guest today. I'm going to talk to Amir Somoji, who I've known for, for many, many years. Uh, he's a friend, a Santos fan uh, like myself. I don't know if I could have disclosed that. Sorry, Amir. <laughs> uh, but he's very professional anyway. Anyway, he's a very renowned sports marketing consultant with an extensive career in Brazil, more than 20 years. Uh, and dozens or hundreds, actually, of articles published in the most important media outlets in the country. Uh, can say that he's specialized in the Brazilian market, but definitely not only, right? Um, he's actually very, very knowledgeable about the international sports marketing, and he uses that knowledge to help his uh, clients grow. Um, a few years ago, he founded Sports Value, and the company provides services in the fields of sponsorship, branding, uh, clubs, the internationalization projects, financial viability studies, business planning. Uh, he does that to sponsors, startups, agencies, investors. I mean, um, a large selection of, of, of clients. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to learn uh, from Amir. So I'm going to invite him to join us right after this. Hi, oh, there, where he is? Where is it? There you are. Hi, Amir. Good to Hi, see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for the invitation. For me, it's a great pleasure. We are a long time friends. We wrote a blog. We, we will talk about this, our our blog. But in my opinion, it's a really great opportunity to be here to talk with you. That's right. That's right. I think that's how we first uh, got in touch through a common friend, Marcus Silveira. 
and um, sh should send them uh, the link to, to follow us uh, live as well. Um, yeah, Amir, great to have you here. And, and normally I start this um, talk asking people to talk about their career, right? We, I'm going to ask you about your career path, but um, I want actually to start by asking you what is it that you do as a consultant? You know, what does sport, sport value does? And, you know, um, and what do you do at sports value? Just before you answer, there's, let me just uh, tell you that there's already some comments here. Um, Carlos Vieira says, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, I don't know if you know him. Jesus Lorenzo, uh, always watching us from Rennes in France. There is Regina Justo from Barra Bonita. Good to have you with us. And uh, if, if you're watching, want to let us know where you're watching from, please do so. So, Amir, what, what is it that you do as a, as a consultant, Sports Value? What does it do and what you do at Sport Value? Fantastic. Well, my company, Sports Value, I created in 2018 after uh, working like a consultant and, of course, in like an executive in different firms. But right now I'm working in a different way if you com if I compare when I create the company. Because when I create the company, is a traditional world, 2018, 2019, working with traditional consulting service. And right now, after pandemic, it's totally different. The, de the clients, the demand, the, the what they are demanding is totally different. My partnerships with some uh, companies that I can bring some new data from digital world to the clients. For example, now I can evaluate a sponsorship property with digital tools that I can access with my partnership, for example, with Zinc from Porto Alegre, is a company who analyzes performance. So I can work right now, I'm doing right now, a, a report about marketing, to a sponsor, I can bring some solutions to Brazilian market from Europe that I'm doing right now, and also doing a business plan to a startup right now. So I can mix sometimes my marketing uh, knowledge inside the business planning. For example, I, uh, I told yesterday to a friend, in my disclosure, in valuations or about uh, business plans, I always put, if you do what I'm talking about in a marketing plan that I'm presenting inside the business plan, for example, you can reach. It's crazy because disclosure is normal. Oh, you can, you can use this information 10 years later, but no, because it's impossible to, to, to reach some valuations without marketing. So that's the difference maybe from a, a traditional consult, consultant who works in sports, more oriented, for example, to business planning or strategic planning, because in general, it's about the financial items. And for me, I work, we are going to talk about this, the financial numbers, the balance sheets, but without marketing, without the strategies, and right now, with, without the disruptive strategies that you must to create to reach youngsters, uh, mature people in different media vehicles and, and, and situations, you must learn how the youngsters are, are consuming sports or other entertainment. So after pandemic, my, my, my change inside my, my, my view of sports marketing is totally directly to digital impacts because and I, I'm talking for, for example, about smart stadium to a client and explaining that you have third, okay, 30,000 people, 40,000, 50,000, 100,000, okay, but you have millions watching on TV. At the same model, if you compare to 20 years ago. So the disruptive is to create something new that you can earn money. So my job right now is more oriented to bring some trends than a business planning really hard with just numbers. So this is the difference after pandemic and before pandemic, in my opinion.
sorry, I'm going to start off. You, you could have told me that uh, you're not listening. <laughs> you're just, uh, you can say, Joe, I'm not listening. Yeah. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, I was on mute. Anyway, <laughs> I was saying that uh, we, we, well, we mentioned how we, we met each other uh doing a blog together with a friend but we also worked uh, together um we did a project uh for soccer x uh, back then uh, so i know that you collaborate with other companies in that case i reached out to you i wanted a, an expert in, in some fields that um, i wasn't one uh and then we could uh, create something very good uh, for them uh friends from cis now kept um, doing that uh, project um, after us and but how is it then your structure is that you doing most of the work do you collaborate with with many other people um how does it work and there's already some people uh saying hi here and um our friends from uh sports network say that they're learning and they also enjoyed that i was uh, without sound for a bit and nicholas thanks for for letting me know as well <laughs> i think that's fixed right uh, so amir how is it that uh, you work when I created uh, Sports Value in 2018, my idea is not to create a huge structure. Now it's called totally involved in this situation, but in 2018, it's difficult to talk about remote, how you can work with a team uh, outside a room, no, inside a room. So now it's easy, but at that moment, I discovered that I need to work in a horizontal way. So I have a digital guy who can help me every uh, 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 every time to my uh, issues and of course the, the client's issues. And also uh, the creative who can help me in two or three days can give me the delivery that I need. So at the end, Joan, Joan, the most important thing is not about a huge structure and how you can deliver a service I, I'm, for example, I'm totally specialized, specialized in sport. Now I have this connection with Zing. It's totally involved with digital performance. So now I can bring some insights and some solutions to my clients, connecting a partnership that I create. It's not about money. It's about a, a relationship, a, a company relationship that we are doing some uh, approach commercial approach together. Sometimes they use my my approach to a client. He is working with some clubs, not with me, because he's a, a two. But this mix that I have, another company really interesting, that is com completely different than what, what I'm doing is the way that I believe for my job. So for example, now I'm working in a technological solution to put all my data and to create automatically automatically reports. It's really interesting because it's not about how much it costs because you can give for free if you have a business model besides this. So what, what I believe that I can work, for example, uh, sponsorships like a bank, like Sicredi, a really big bank, Red Bull Bragantino, a club here in Brazil who hired us to work uh, financial analysis about how much it costs that space uh, from sponsors, uh, sponsorship is the, the sponsorship space. Other examples that I'm working is a solution from Denmark. We can talk about my overseas uh, approach, but in Denmark, we have a solution called Pekasu. It's converting the fan into micro sponsor. It's really interesting. I'm trying to bring to Europe, of course, because the, the, the company is in Denmark, but also to Latin America. It's huge because in Latin America, we don't have the, the same GDP per capita, of course, but we have millions of fans. If you compare to Denmark, we are talking all the time about this number. It's crazy because just a neighborhood in a city has, for example, the fan base bigger than all the country. It's crazy because if you go to Sao Paulo, 22 million people. Imagine how, how many people you have here with money, not so big money, because in Denmark, the GDP per capita is bigger, but you have in Brazil or in other parts of the world, a share of the population with 
with capacity, financial and, capacity. And, and, so, and what's what's that product? What does it do? It's a digital solution that put the the the, the fan beside the club. It's not like a member that you you go to the match. No, you you help the club with a proposal. So the club needs to build a training center, or maybe need to hire a, a good player, or invest in green solutions to the environment. So the fan could give some dollars from each goal. So it's connected with the passion. So it's like crowdfunding. Like it's like like crowdfunding, but in general, these partnerships is not so uh, profitable to the club. No, João. It's like the same, like social media, like socios.com. It's really good because it's a new income, but I don't know, half part stayed with the, the company, you know, with the, the, the club, just with the half part. And in this project, they are really smart. They give 90%, 90% of the money because the money came from the pocket, from the fan to the club, not to an intermediary. So in my opinion, the future is like a, a IT solution, no? What is an IT solution? It's my solution, give to my client, and the client will use to earn money, not to give money to others. So it's like Facebook, Instagram is the same because I'm studying a lot. Instagram is incredible. If you sell something like these influencers selling products, they are millionaires. But if you are just putting content, what you are going to sell? No, you need to change the mindset to understand this. No. All right. All right. Good. Uh, that sounds very interesting. Um, so I want to ask you now, I'm going to go back and ask you how then you started working in sport because you obviously were not uh, working in sports uh, from the beginning. So what led you to that? And for anyone watching at home, if you want to prepare your questions, you know, this is interactive. You can see that we do have uh, some, you know, a uh, good amount of people watching on, on LinkedIn as well as uh, on, on YouTube. If you want to let us know where uh, you're watching from, that would be great too. So, Amir, tell us how you started. Fantastic. Well, I, I, I am 47 years old. I have business administration degree here in Brazil in an important uh, university here, uh, ESPM. And then I, I entered like a trainee in a big bank here in Brazil at the marketing department. Uh, my, my passion is marketing. I decided to work with these. But at the end of the second year, or in the middle of this journey, I discovered that banks is not about marketing, it's about money. If you want to work with marketing, you must work in other perspective, you know, like consume, entertainment. And in that, in that moment, with my questions, I discovered the sports marketing, and then I, I made the same, the same calculation that everybody probably who is watching this these interview. We love sports, we love marketing, or if you are a lawyer, or if you are a, I don't know, a, a doctor. Oh, I want to work with my passion. So I decide to study. I begin a, a course here in Brazil, and then I travel to Barcelona State. I stayed one year there in 2000 to 2001, studying a master in sports marketing. So I had, I, I had classes with the guy who created the season ticket in Barcelona, the other who managed the sponsorship. So at that moment, we are talking about 2000. Barcelona was, was living a terrible financial trouble, not comparing with this moment, but in that moment, is, uh, in that year that I was in, in Spain, uh, Barcelona uh, finished in sixth at the league, imagine how terrible was it. So what I discover, the real Barcelona is really interesting because everybody loves Barcelona and, and other teams like Real Madrid, PSG, Chelsea, Manchester City. But in that moment, it's not about the performance. It's about the history, the culture. The, and then is a new world. If you are from Brazil or from Argentina, you know the passion from football is about Boca River, Flamengo. Okay, but it's not about this. It's about uh, history from a people connected with the club and 
before the Mass Dem uh, Tune Club, uh, more than a club, campaign in 2003, they talk in the street about this. Well, we are more than a club, you are more than a club. It's not about marketing. It's a real DNA, you know, John. So this is a classroom because I visit Real Madrid. I, I saw two matches in Bernabeu and also in, in, in Camp Nou. And I discover this is not so different from Latin America. They stayed beside the stadium drinking beer and then enter to watch the match. It's not like US or maybe UK. So when I came back to Brazil, I decided that I will do the same. I will go to the big clubs. I will create a, a, a Barcelona in Brazil. And my first meeting was in Sao Paulo Football Club because in that moment, 2001, 2002, it was the big one. It's like it's about a, a small Barcelona in that moment, winning titles, a lot of money, selling players, the big stadium. Say, my God, I want to put all the concepts that I discovered in Europe, and then I discovered how difficult it will be. And I discovered because they didn't understand in Portuguese with all presentation. No, season ticket? No, this is not our culture. No, sponsorship outside the jersey? No, it's impossible. So all these concepts that everybody knows. I have, I have really contacts in Europe, sports marketing agencies. The client called right now and said, I want to engage in social media. I don't want visibility in the jersey. So it's, it's, it's too expensive, and this is impossible to engage from television. I prefer to work on digital way. It's incredible, no, John, because this is the, 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 the shift that we need to change. We need to bring 100 sponsors. So it's impossible to put 100 sponsors in the shirt. jersey and in the shirt. And in some, Brazil, some, some clubs are trying, I think. In Brazil, they are trying. They are trying to, to break this concept. And the other point that I believe is about uh, the, the cultural movement about the fan. The fans in Brazil, they love the club. Okay, they love, but they prefer to win. It's not about love, DNA, history. It's about I want to win, I want to win. So it's really difficult to exchange with the fan other experience so you don't need to give entertainment, digital marketing. No, you must to give good players and win. But you have 20, and 20 doing the same thing. At the end, just one will win. And 19 suffered a lot with financial problems, don't have any, any new history to, to tell to the fans. So in my consulting consultancy, all the time I'm talking about forget the, the performance, working in a new strategic way because in my case for example, I love NBA I'm not watching because I, I I will saw my team I'm talking about the sport about the the hip hop about the celebrities about the beautiful game about the one second to the end and everything change this is the history that NBA put in our hearts in our minds so like Premier League or La Liga. La Liga is the, the best example. When I lived in Spain and 10 years later, La Liga is the was the fourth league in Europe. And right now we are running to surpass Premier League. It's incredible. Not about revenues, but about digital approach and marketing strategy. It's incredible. They are really smart. So what I believe that the emerging markets, that is the why I'm working Half part of my job right now is totally involved with outside Brazil, Latin America and Europe. Why? Because they understand, João. They understand the shifts, the insights. They, they, they understand that they need to reach some opportunity, marketing opportunities that in Brazil they prefer, oh, sell, selling my, my T-shirt. No, I can't sell. I can, for example... Uh, they, uh, 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 in one moment in Brazil, they are selling to digital banks the sponsorship, the master, the, the master sponsorship. But the 30, 30 years old audience don't want to see 
live matches on, on TV. They are totally in digital. And these brands are, are putting $4 million, $5 million. So it's not about money, it's about the shift. So from the beginning, from my, my work until now, and with the pandemic, is the, the, the possibilities is totally uh, uh, gi gi different from before. But in my opinion, my job is to try some knowledge to the market to understand how to manage some data. For example, I have this database, 30,000. 30,000 people is a lot of people that you can connect connect, understand, and then use that new data to create assertive sponsorship campaigns, activations, promotional tools. So at the end, John, after 22 years of experience in sports, I discover that you need to bring the leadership. It's not about, for example, my case, I worked with a client, really conservative, I, 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 it's impossible to bring Heineken strategies to this guy, but they could uh, brief this strategy and create yours more normal without so many money, so much money. But we need to understand the concept. For example, sponsorships that engage in social media is fantastic that you can connect histories, idols influencers and e-commerce so at the end my job changing a lot from this perspective of pandemics and new clients from uh, corporate market but when i arrived from spain until now i'm trying to bring new knowledge to shift this mentality of sports sport, sports marketing from 90s we are living right now Good, Amir. Thanks. Uh, that, that, that was a good summary. Uh, there are some comments here. I think that uh, we have a, a good audience in Brazil today. Not surprising. So, Eduardo Fritsch uh, de Moraes says, Amir Samoji is a disruptive professional that worked tireless to change the soccer industry in Brazil. This guy makes us proud. All the best. I suppose you know him. <laughs> yeah, sure. He's a friend. Th thanks for being here with us. You can count Eduardo. from this. Thanks. Thanks a lot, my friend. Ot Otacilio, uh, also watching here from Brazil. Hello, Ota. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, here's a Marcos uh, Silveira saying uh, hello. Uh, we oh, talked Marcos. about you uh, today, Marcos. We told everyone that you're, you're the guilty one for this happening today because you put us in touch uh, many, many years ago. If you have a question for Amir, you know, don't be shy. You can post uh, something there. But Amir, uh, you mentioned uh, some challenges that you've, you're facing with, uh, with your job. Uh, uh, what would you say is the, maybe the, the main challenge that, uh, that you faced? Then? In my opinion, I discovered sport when I, I was a child, like everybody. And in, at the middle of my career, I decided to work on it. But what I discovered, because for me, it's like, uh, it's, like, it's like stats. I love football. I love sports. Everybody loves sports. So if I work with this, I will earn my money. I will discover new ways to develop my career. And that's enough. But sports is not the main. We decide that sports is important for us in, in our perspective. But when you look after 20 years working on it, I discovered that the big challenge is we are talking about 20% of the interest, 30%, okay, but not 100%. If you go, for example, to entertainment and you see how much money they are doing with sizing, uh, with, with selling products, with a lot of sponsorship investment, of course, sports received a lot of money, but at the end is a small part. And, and a good example is about retail. The global retail is trillions of dollars. And sports retail is billions of dollars. So we are in this small part. For us, it's gigantic. Of course, sports is our passion. But a lot of, a lot of people prefer other things, 
like talk series about I don't know traveling, uh, music. A lot of big sponsors discover that investing in singers, influencers, music, lifestyle is better to sell products than in sports in Brazil. Not in US, maybe, but in Brazil, yes, because you are talking about a youngster who prefers, for example, NBA, skate, esports. If you're talking about Flamengo, Corinthians, it's impossible to reach this guy because this guy don't want to talk like your grandfather, your dad. Because I, I write a lot of things about this, is about the difference between the generations. So my team is the same from my dad, from for instance, all, all the people around, around the world like that. These new generations prefers another thing. It's not about Brazil. It's about the world. In US, if you go to the old people, nature, soccer is just 1% of interest to watch soccer. 1%. But it's growing there, no? Yeah, but the youngsters is 10%. It's 10 times more. What I can understand that, of course, football, American football in the U.S. is like a religion. It's impossible to compare like basketball or baseball. But in, in the youngsters, football surpasses baseball, for example, in that target. If you want to talk with the youngsters, maybe soccer is, or and basketball, of course, is better, or, or hockey, ice hockey too, than baseball. So the numbers are changing really rapidly, really quickly. So, John, what I believe that a sponsor, an unknown sponsor, like, for example, crypto, a giant, now everybody knows about it, uh, enter in Staples Center and said, I will pay more. They took out this fantastic brand, historical, iconic brand from sports world, And I will put my brand there because I can, because I have money, because I'm so big to do it. And other example, the owner of Walmart, one of the most important companies in the world, can buy a team, pay a lot of money. And one team in US is the equivalent of 30 teams in Brazil. That's crazy. Because if you look, it is small. And the other look, oh my God, if you do a good job here, you can exploit in two or three years like venture capitalists so João, the moment is really interesting for us everybody who is watching this this live can feel this we are alive in a revolution because with 5g and vr and metaverse we are going to live in a new perspective like you are playing your your video game but is real life consuming, watching videos, talking with your friends. It's incredible because we lived the other life before this, and now we are living this new world. In, in terms of professionalism, in my opinion, it's easier now than in the 80s or 90s. When I began analyzing the balance sheets from the clubs, I, I, I visit some parts of Sao Paulo who... who when I can find some newspapers, I'm talking about 2003, 2004, 2005. It's not so, so, so long time. What I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the balance sheets because in internet, just one or two clubs publish. So I, I found a lot. Of, I have these these documents with me. Is 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 newspaper with the balance sheet published there? So it's incredible because right now I can do. All my analysis from PDFs, and I put in Excel, and that's a, in three or four days I can do. And that moment, I need to come back to the to the office and call the clubs. And some sometimes it's difficult to find a way to receive the doc. So right now it's completely different. So now the the big challenge is is easy for everybody. No joke. Everybody can access everything so you must to be more creative and disruptive to reach your goals and and amir and so let's uh, talk a bit more about the brazilian football so will brazilian let's say club football not the national team that's uh, we hope we will do well at the end of the year at the world cup and has a good chances i i think 
as good as any other probably uh but will brazilian club football ever be able to compete with europeans again that's a fantastic question because in my in my analysis it's impossible to compare for example uh english club or or also barcelona real madrid with the big clubs in brazil because it's about fan base it's about globalization the big club in brazil flamengo 40 million fans barcelona reach it for 400 million fans so it's 10 times more so the contracts the the tv viewers the digital impact but what i believe if you compare for example psg a few years ago right now manchester city also chelsea they, they build it's not like manchester united or liverpool is a new club with a new organization with a new uh, board members working on a strategic project so what i believe if you can bring some investors to brazil these teams don't uh, don't need to invest a lot of money in high end players you know vini junior rodrigo and all of them neymar we can build really cheap teams and these teams can generate value maintaining these players in brazil because my concept every day from at the beginning from 2000s until now that brazil cannot sell all players of course you can sell some players but make account if you stay with vini jr vini jr 40 million euros when the euro is three to one now euro is more than five to one just wait and you can sell with 23 24 from 60 million and four or five or six to, to one in this moment so all the time in twitter i can say no they we need to sell we need to sell a 17 years old guy 17 years old guy no you can sell with 23 24 so in my opinion these investors like John Textor, for example, in Botafogo, can find good players in a cheap way because Crystal Palace, he is the, the minority shareholder. They can buy a cheap player because in the Premier League, you need to, 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 to pass in a lot of policies to bring a player. But if you are in Botafogo, Flamengo, Corinthians or other Brazilian clubs, you can do it. Like Red Bull, Red Bull in Brazil, they are... They don't have so big brand like Flamengo or Corinthians, but they are investing in young players to sell to Europe. Is the business? It's not the big business to to a big club in Brazil, but it's a good example. But with this strategy, they are they are they are achieving good performance. So business strategy and sport performances they are connecting. I discover when I read the book about. Uh, Guardiola and Bayern Munich. Why? Because at the beginning of the history, why they hired Bar uh, Guardiola at that moment? The book explained. Bayern Munich is really big, really famous, well-known, one of the big clubs in the world, but nobody respects Bayern Munich like the beautiful game. Is the hard game, the strong players. No. Huminich the, decided that it's time to change this history they want to be like barcelona they said this in the book so we have the branding and we have the football strategy they are connected to sell products t-shirts uh, and to to travel around to play in us or in asia and to open youth academies we must play a beautiful football that's incredible because bayern munich decide to to be like Barcelona. And now you can see Bayern Munich is the same way. They are winning the titles, playing really beautiful. They are changing. They are changing the, the, this branding history that just strong players can play in Bayern Munich, for example. So what I discovered that football is football. Marketing in football is marketing in football. It's not about sports marketing. No, we need to understand more about the product the business the fan base the sponsorship delivery so it's really complex to connect these things about sports performance and sports marketing and financial strategy but 
when you have a smart CEO, a good, a good, a good team, in my opinion, in three or four years from Brazil, we can compete because my analysis showed that Brazil is the biggest market outside Europe. Right now, with the exchange rate, we are surfing, so suffering. So uh, maybe Russia or MLS is the same, but is uh, without players. We are talking about 900 million, one billion dollars in revenue. We can reach three or four billion dollars really easy if all the clubs going to the same way, like in US like in, in the domestic leagues in Europe. So this discussing about clubs enterprise and a new league, this I, I, kind of thing. I want, I, want to talk exactly, I want to talk exactly about that. Well, there's two things uh, that I want to talk about that you mentioned there. One is maybe uh, when you're talking about this a comparison with other leagues and, and the teams in Brazil, you recently published um, uh, a study about the top 20 Brazilian club financials. So maybe you would like to tell us what are maybe the, the main findings uh, in that. And then we also can tie in to these two very important uh, moments that uh, we're living in Brazil. One is the clubs becoming companies. In Brazil, it's called SAF. Right, the, um, the the yeah, the clubs moving from the association formats, uh, members, the clubs, to an actual company, and and then the other thing is the Libra, right, or the the new Brazilian league that is being talked about. So maybe you want to talk about those points. Fantastic. Well, I'm working on these numbers. My inspiration was Deloitte when I lived in Spain and before uh, I discovered Deloitte, the numbers from Deloitte. So I created my own analysis at the beginning of the 2000s and until now I'm working with the same database, analyzing the same uh, clubs. Of course, sometimes enter one club, another uh, went out from the second division and when someone come came from the first division, but the, the the huge numbers is totally the same club from the from the last 20 years. What I discovered that the clubs in Brazil are totally involved with what are what what are uh, what is what is the reality from the country. So it's impossible to isolate this. So for example, in 2012 the number is two times more than now in dollars. Why? Because the exchange rate is to totally different. So right now it's really difficult to, to, to fight against this situation. So in my opinion, the clubs ne need to open new opportunities in dollars and euros, not to sell the player. Because what's the normal? You sell someone with 18, 20 years old and hire someone with 35. So it's not smart. So in, not instead smart. of set, instead of selling players, is the solution selling the clubs? Yeah, because with this owner, the owner wants to win titles to to leverage the brand, and then right now the moment is really interesting because, for example, big clubs are surfing a lot in financial terms, like Cruzeiro, Botafogo. So these big clubs with a lot of troubles, are entering before in this reality. I believe in more five years, the big clubs will create the PLC model. The SAF is the name, but at the end, it's like PLC model that you need to open your accounts. You, you must create a compliance uh, policy inside your management. You need to bring some marketing structure to give some experience to the fan. Create... Sorry, do you think all clubs will go that direction or only the ones that are in bad financial situation? In this moment is the, the situation from the bad financial situation. But in the, the medial term, probably the investors, for example, I will give a name of a good, a good club that I believe is one of the most interesting clubs to analyze in Brazil. Atlético Goianiense. It's a small club, 
It's not Cruzeiro, Botafogo. But what's the difference in my analysis from Atlético Goianiense and, for example, or Atlético Paranaense? These two Atléticos. One, Atlético Paranaense is really important with a big structure, a beautiful history, and Atlético Goianiense is the same, but in a small, small reality. They don't have big debts. Atlético Goianiense don't have debts. All the money that they, they, they are receiving, they are using to maintain without debts the management. That's incredible because if you buy this club, what you can do? Invest in players, invest in brand, invest in globalization, for example. Right now, we have 20 clubs, two or three, maybe some parts of the world could say, I know this club because we know, John, that's, that's really sad to talk about this, but Nobody in Thailand will wake up morning and say, I want to buy the Flamengo's T-shirt or Corinthians T-shirt. That's the reality. So, Atlético Goianiense or Atlético Paranaense or outside Santos, Flamengo, Sao Paulo, the others don't have this powerful... Hello? Did we lose? We are here. Ah, sorry, you're and back. We bring new values, new history to, to tell around the world. Of course, the traditional club in Brazil, São Paulo, Flamengo, Corinthians, Grêmio, they don't want to exchange the, the environment, the political environment. Because imagine, right now I am the, the president from uh, association. If you bring the SAF model, I will go out. I need to go out because I need to bring CEO, CFO, CTO. It's not, it's not more, more space to the political environment. So this is one thing. And the other thing that they believe they will pay a lot of uh, taxes. The taxes is the big issue. Because imagine, I will sell Vinny Jr. And that moment, I will find in the, the, the finish, finish in my year with 30 million dollars in profits. It's a lot of money. And you need to pay 27% of this. It's normal. If you go to German uh, German football and, you, and, and, and see the revenues and the costs and the tax revenue from the government, they are working the same, the same, the same uh, scale. Because if you pay more salaries, you, you need to pay more taxes contributions, if you receive more money from sponsorships, you need to pay more taxes. It's normal. It's the normal world. And the football clubs in Brazil don't want it because they said, no, I don't want to pay. But SAF model gives the opportunity to pay just 5%, 5% from all revenue in a company who can earn $200 million, wrong. $200 million and just paying 5%. So you can bring investors, all management models, compliance, bring a lot of money, lot of money. to the business and just pay 5% of taxes. So at the end, in my opinion, the government must say, you must change the model because it's really good for you. I'm giving my money to you, my public money to you, to exchange this uh, political environment. That's the big point, because in our constitution, you can say, oh, you must be a company. It's impossible. But in all countries that I studied, it's not about a government. It's about the league. The league is a private company who represent the clubs, and the league can say, CBF, for example, in Brazil, the Brazilian Confederation, they can say, to play in my, in my competition, you must be a company. 100% the shareholder, the club. 100%, not 90%. No, 100% Flamengo is the owner of the company. But CBF could say, to play in my competition, you must be a company. So it's not about government, public yeah. sector. It's about private sector regulating your oper op op operation. No? 
Yeah, personally, I think that in terms of a, a business, especially international business, it's probably more important the question of the, the league, the organization as a league, as a group of clubs, than how the club is forms in itself. You, you for instance, had a, a recent article that compared you know, two different business models between the finalists of the Champions League, Liverpool and Real Madrid. And obviously, one is a member's club, like the majority of the clubs in Brazil. The other one, you know, has owners, a uh, big corporation behind it. And you, you might want to actually to give uh, some takeaways from, from, from that article too. But essentially, what people watch, as you said, you know, in, in Asia or, 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 you know, other markets are the, the league. If the, the competition is exciting, then you have to kind of sell everything together. Then obviously you will have a few brands within that that will be more successful. But so, so, so as it happens in, in the American football um, teams or league or NBA or the MLS, or, or even with the Premier League, but you have the whole thing as a business structured uh, in a better way. So for me, I think that the, the question of the league is even more important than the, the turning into a company or not. Although for some clubs in particular, especially for those that are, you know, dying uh, because of that, then it may be a bit more urgent. Yeah, in my opinion, the league is the most important thing, more than everything, more than one club. Because if you compare NBA, NBA or NFL, well, NFL is two times bigger than NBA. So let's talk about NFL. NFL take a really big, huge TV contract, for example, and divide with the same part from each club. Because I discovered in Green Bay Packer, Bay Packers, uh, financial information because Green Bay Packers is like our associations. They they must publish uh, the accounts. I can explain it at the middle, but at the end, all the market decide that he, the business of the league around one balance sheet because everybody wants to know how much money each team receive from the league. So it's a huge money that each club receives. So at the end, for example, the richest club, Dallas Cowboys is waiting in a line to win the, the the Super Bowl since 1996. Or LA Clippers, the the owner with more more money in a bank, with what around 90 billion dollars in wealthy, and this club didn't reach the finals. So these mechanisms that they they work with drafts. The, the the correct division is impossible to put in practice in football, I know. But Premier League and after other leagues discover that you can create some scales to bring some performance indicators, audience, and okay, now we have some difference between the big one and the, the small one, but it's 1.5, 1.3 sometimes in yeah. German Bundesliga is like the same. It's really small, the difference between the teams. And then you go to Brazil and Portugal, who is working in this individual model, this is six times, seven times, sometimes eight times more from the top, top tier from the 20. So it's impossible to have some quality inside the match. Maybe uh, France, uh, League, League, League One, is surfing with this because PSG will, go, will put 5-0, 3-0, 6-0, 7-0. Uh, it's about capitalism. It's not good. It's not wealthy to the business. So the big challenge is to connect this uh, analysis about money, uh, about doping, about referees, about a lot of things that is totally involved with the 20 clubs. It's not for one club. And each club will work hard in your sports performance, in your marketing strategies, but the league is guarantee the equality between the, the, the matches. In Brazil, you have a really big problem. It's about the people believe that I'm big, so I, I, I deserve more, more money, 
more helping. No, if you are big, you have more capacities, so you can reach your goals uh, easy. And the small one, the medium one, maybe that depends on the TV money. So, for example, Leicester City. When Leicester City won, the title is incredible. For me, I, I, I studied a lot the numbers to discover. And 80% of the budget from Leicester City is from TV. And you go to Manchester City or maybe Manchester United or Liverpool, and it's just 35%, 40%. That's the difference, the importance of this collective arrangement that you need to work. And the second thing is you are big, but it's not bigger than 20. It's impossible. Barcelona is big. Real Madrid is big. Manchester United is big. But Premier League and La Liga is bigger than one club. And this is wonderful because 20, you can sell uh, products, you can sell uh, from the league, no content, you can sell sponsorships, regional sponsorship, because right now it's not about the globalization. It's the local impact, no wrong. It's the globalization with local impact. So now Barcelona is working with your sponsors in each market, Real Madrid, and all of these clubs studied Manchester United and other English clubs, and now US leagues are studying how Barcelona, how Manchester United are doing to do the same. It's normal that in five years you are going to see Lakers youth academies or maybe Chicago Bulls schools around the world. Right now, they don't need to ex maybe expand in these terms. But in more five years, probably they will do. And the Brazilian clubs, with a lot of history, a lot of youth investment that they can build idols global idols you can imagine how how is the value of vini jr right now and the titles that flamengo didn't want didn't didn't win and more the jersey that they didn't sell and the sponsorship contracts that they did they didn't firm which is more valuable and the second question is about your activity human resources uh, in brazil you don't talk about human resources in football clubs and in my opinion the career from a, a, a player who can stay in your team with your fans doing your homework like a celebrity working in marketing campaigns brazil is one of the most important media market markets in the world so if you build and you have, you have, you, we had some experience with Neymar in Santos, Ronaldo in Corinthians. You don't have more. And Rogério Ceni in São Paulo. Maybe these three, three examples is so poor. We need to create this environment about bring the agent and explain. Listen, if you go to Russia or France or Germany, it's really difficult. But if you build your career before here three or four or five years of like a local idol, and then you can go everywhere. But bring some titles. Bring a Libertadores America, Brazilian Tito, a Copa do Brasil Tito, because this is important to your career to perform. One or two years in Europe, you must stay, uh, fight against other nationalities. You don't understand the language, the food. Also in Portugal. It's not easy to a Brazilian to play well in the in Portu in Portugal league, Portuguese league. So at the end, João, we have the most difficult thing: good players. That if you build our consume industry here, you can export like an NBA, like right. a Premier League. In 1990, in 1992, Premier League was born. In 80, in, in 1987. Brazilian clubs create one kind of league five years before Premier League. So we, we, we can reach, in my opinion, not the same, uh, the same situation that you can see in the big leagues, but the Brazilian way of football is a Brazilian DNA. It's not a English or American DNA. So if some clubs understand this, we can shift the situation, in my opinion. Okay. Amir, we already passed uh, one hour uh, since, since we're here, really flew by. So um, I actually have, so I, 
I want to have at least one more question um, before we go, because I see, uh, I think it's the, the latest um, article that you published was about what can traditional sports learn from esports. And I think there were some interesting findings there. So what is it? Maybe can you share some of th those learnings? And then I suggest that people also go and, and follow Amir on, on LinkedIn and follow his articles uh, weekly. You have a weekly newsletter, right? So yeah, I created this weekly yeah. newsletter, a global newsletter in English. So in my LinkedIn, you can subscribe and receive by mail from LinkedIn. It's really interesting because is a huge audience that I created. I, for me, is a really sur surprised me. Twenty five thousand people is receiving every week these these insights. It's not about just sports value data. Of course, I can bring some data, but in my opinion, is the opportunity to share what I'm studying, what I'm I'm learning from the new reports about this data. So, this article I, I published today explained that if you need to. If you want to bring youngsters to your business, you need to talk like youngsters want. And esports is the best way. Social networks and esports and connect, they are connected, no? Because Twitch is a social network and is a platform, is everything. It's live commerce, is what way what you want, you can create inside that because it's a huge impact. So esports like humor, technology, community. Uh, this is this real life because the guy can can ask from a pizza in the middle of the, the, the broadcast is impossible in the television mo model but if you want to bring new audience you need to think about it because for example Nick the, the channel Nick with NFL created a really impressive showcase putting some uh, kind of technological elements to give to the youngsters, really youngsters who watch in Nick, the cartoons, the, the a match from NFL. So what I believe that you can cross some interesting strategies. And the most important thing is about the influencer. Because I'm, I'm working in some projects with esports. What I discover in a presentation, normally, a football club, I want this... Titles, I, I have these players, and they are talking just about fun engagement and how many uh, how many people you can reach with my my team and more. They analyze the engagement like a marketing recurrency delivery to the investor or to the club. So it's not about win, it's about entertain the people. So for me, it's really huge because if if you are a club and win a title, exploit, leverage, of course, everything. But if you can win, you can give the experience. For example, last uh, yesterday, I visit uh, NBA house here in Sao Paulo. A fantastic uh, strategy. I paid a ticket to watch a match in a television, in a big screen, but it's just at the same of the same situation. I'm not visiting uh, a stadium, a complex, but all the environment inside is crazy with with the marketing activations, the possibility to to take your pictures and to watch some some dunks. So at How the much, end, how much was the ticket? It's like thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, almost thirty dollars. And I, I I visit last week with my Thank daughter you. because at the night. At the night, you can bring your kid, but NBA knows and create the fun day from four o'clock to eight o'clock. So that's perfect. So we need to 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 run to understand how the marketing is going on. And the youngster in Brazil, uh, the, the the final number that I want to bring, the youngster in Brazil is more connected with NBA than the youngster in U.S. You say, no, it's impossible. No, Morning Consult, the, a really important company in U.S., analyzing all the leagues all, all over the world, explained that in Brazil you have football or nothing more. So if you quit football, you don't have nothing. So 
In US, we have a lot of modalities that the youngsters can co be connected. And here, NBA reached 50 million fans. 50 million fans from 200 million is a lot of people. So it's crazy because big companies are spending a lot of money in NBA transmissions, in broadcasts, and in strategies like that NBA house, and nothing about Olympics and football in Brazil. So this is crazy because uh, uh, from Google, they are now 4% 4, 4 of the population in Brazil playing basketball. Five years ago, it's 2%. So the pandemic changing everything. And in my opinion, this four can reach 8% because 56% of the youngsters prefers NBA than other Brazilian leagues. So it's a lot of money that you can bring. So just an example about basketball. Imagine if you talk about esports. We have 83 million people, like a gamer, gamer, declared gamer. So at the end, João, Brazil just needs to come uh, to align these big numbers with the business models. That's a big issue because we have the engagement, but don't, don't reach good revenue. It's about business, not about engagement. We need to create the business model to catch this money. Yeah, um, I I read something recently as well that you know a few years ago we were talking about you know how some gaming brands or gaming you know uh, manufacturers or makers kind of needed or wanted to have some sports brands associated to them, and now it kind of reverted. It's clear that it is the the clubs, it is the the leagues that actually need you know, the, the, the games, you know, to, to reach the, the audience uh, that is so important to them. Now, Amir, so we actually, you know, we passed the hour. It uh, was really great to, to have you here. There was, I think, much more that we could talk about, but maybe a, a second one. Um, we could do that. Just before we go, a short one to you. You already mentioned uh, one book. You, you might actually... Um, suggest the same one or, or a different one. I always ask my guests to recommend a book or if you also want to talk about a podcast or YouTube channel or something that you would recommend um, to people, then I would like you to do that. And I already recommend your uh, newsletter on, on LinkedIn as well. So do you have a, a book to, to recommend? Yeah, I have this book here. It's in Portuguese, but you can find in English version. It's about Seattle Sounders. It's about the the success of the business model. It's Who's the author? Who's the author? Mike Gastino. Okay. Gastino. Okay. Great. You have you have the 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 English version. Why I love this book? Because it's about the business model that Seattle Saunders created. It's not about the team, the titles, the performance. And it's incredible, Joe, because just one spoiler until I go, it's about the middle of the book. I stop and I say, no, no, it's not possible that I'm reading up this. At the middle of this history to create Seattle Saunders, they create the club inside a bar, a pub, and they create a walking from this bar, everybody drunk, going to the match. That's the DNA that they create. Yeah, it's, a, it's a famous one. That before famous the match, one. they all go, do, 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 they do this walk. Yeah, It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I want to do one time in my life this walk with these guys. But in the book, they explain that they discover this is a uh, uh, North American creation. It's not about the DNA from the club that they adapt. No, they create from zero this strategy, and they decided to create something similar to the South of America, the South American clubs in Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil. They made exactly this movement. They drink in a bar, the same bar, and then they walk singing a lot to the match. They create something that is natural for us. That's the most important thing because we have value. In my opinion, the, the true football that you find 
you can find in, in Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, and all the Chile, I don't know, and Mexico, maybe it's the same that the 80s in Europe. Maybe you can establish new venues, new uh, approaches, uh, premium tickets, but we need to stay with these DNA, the real football, the true football, because they are copying us, creating something incredible like this walk, and we have natural these things. So at the end, what I believe that, like, for example, if you go to Asia and the te 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 technological, uh, or maybe if you go to, to Scandinavian, talking about environment, or if you go to US, talking about sports marketing, okay, our DNA maybe is this true, this reality that we, we want to th sing with our friends, drinking our beer. So that's the most important thing at this book, in my opinion, but you have a lot of histories, incredible histories, that they connect celebrities, they, they connect this history with the owner, because imagine it, uh, a soccer in the US using the platform from an NFL team, the Seattle Seahawks create the Seattle Sounders. So a lot of important things. So in my opinion, is the book that I believe that can open some minds that you can build everything that you want. Okay, that's uh, that's very useful. I will check that out. And listen, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. It was very nice to have you here. There is uh, another message left by Jesus here to us. Thank you, João and Amir, for this interesting uh, interview. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to everyone who watched us. Uh, we're going to take a break now in the summer here in Europe uh and then come back with a new season in the in the second semester so amir um thanks a lot and we must speak more often fantastic john for me it's a great pleasure thank you so much from the audience and let's stay in touch from the next year that season all right bye-bye amir stay bye -bye, there john. thank you so much